and welcome back to Holliston High School. We're at Comedian Field as the Milford Scarlet Hawks will take on the Holliston Panthers. The Milford Scarlet Hawks will kick off right to left across your radio and they're away white jerseys, red numbering and lettering, red trim down the sides and their red helmets with the brand new silver logo on the helmet. And the opening kick will sail back to about the 30 and, and that is going to draw an illegal procedure as it ends up out of bounds at around the 27, 28 yard line. So Pat Lahane on the opening kickoff, an illegal procedure. Halston will have pretty good field position to start. I think that kickoff there was intended to try to get a, a crazy hop there and Milford to try to uh, regain possession of that opening kickoff. Although losing the coin toss, they feel pretty confident to uh, go on defense to begin this game. So Milford's going to re-kick now. They're going to try to get some better field position out of this. Scarlet Hawks will have to re-kick now from the 35-yard line. Pat Lahane will tee it up. I say you probably should boot this one hard as possible. Absolutely. Yeah. You no, know Pat Lane. Pat Lahane has a pretty good foot as well. So here is the kickoff retry from the 35, right to left across your radio. It's an end over end kick. Sails back to the 10 yard line. A nice soaring kick there by Lahane, being returned by Grant Buchanan upfield, and he's brought down at around the 24 yard line, and that's where the Haas and Panthers will start. That actually, that re-kick actually benefits Milford. I think Holliston was going to get better field position on the illegal procedure, but re-kicking it, Milford. Yeah, and I would say that did benefit Milford uh, just a little bit. But now the Holliston Panthers offense will come out onto Comedian Field for the first time this regular season. As Nick Athey lines up in the shotgun, it's a four receiver set, three lined up to the right side. Athey takes the snap, it's a low snap, rolls out to his right, he's going to take it himself and will be pushed out at around the 30 yard line. That's about a seven yard gain by the quarterback. David Abrego there on the tackle. So a nice gain for the Panthers on the first run of the game. Looks like he saw nobody open there, just took off and ran. Now in the pistol, this is a four receiver set to either side, goes back to pass, has a man. It's Matt McIsaac, and McIsaac's going to take it down the near sideline. He has an opening, and he's brought out of bounds just past the 40-yard line in Milford territory. So a big gain for McIsaac on the little it was like a little bubble screen there to McIsaac. Yeah, and he was wide open there, and you know, Milford snuck up a little bit there, putting pressure on the quarterback. Marked at the 40 yard line, so a 28 yard pickup on that reception as Athey takes the snap from the gun. He's gonna take it himself, has a hole up the middle, and will pick up about eight yards on that run. It's now 15 yards rushing for Athey. Athey again lined up in the gun. A quick moving Holliston offense here. Four receiver set, one man in the backfield. A screen to the right side of Elkinson. Elkinson going to take it down the near sideline. Has an opening and he's going to be brought out of bounds close to the 20 yard line. That will move the chain once again for the Holliston Panthers. About a 13 yard pickup for Elkinson. And this is what I was talking about in the three game show. The fast moving, a fast paced offense that Holliston Panthers have. As Zappi this time in the pistol, a man in the backfield, three receiver, a four receiver set, two to either side. It's a hand up right up the middle. Goes Matt McIsaac, and he gets pretty close to the 10 yard line. And that is going to be close to another first down. Nick Gaffey does, yard to go. doesn't run the offense as fast as Matt Jay did. And now this looks like it's going to be an early timeout for the Scarlet Hawks. 
You see this quick moving yeah. Collison offense. They should have right called down it a, the field. about two plays prior to that, kind of break up this pace that's gone on by Holliston. But great job by Holliston moving the ball efficiently. They started this drive at the 22, and now they are on the 12-yard line of Milford. And we're only talking about in the first 59 seconds of the game. That's how fast this offense can operate. We are set for action. It is Nick Athey again in the gun with a back to his left. It's a three receiver set, two lined up to the left side. Takes a high snap. He's going to take this himself, finds a gap on the left side, gets right through, and he is going to get into the end zone. A 12 yard touchdown run for Nick Athey, and Holliston is on top, six to nothing. And now for the extra point attempt, the snap and the kick, and it is blocked. And they the ball is still alive. With it. Yep, still alive, and now yeah. he is brought down at around the 15. So a failed attempt at the extra point, but it is six to nothing. Hollison on top of the Milford Scarlet Hawks on WMRC First Class Radio Sports. The Holliston Panthers set to kick off left to right across your radio. After a 12-yard, uh, after a 7-yard, uh, a 12-yard touchdown run to start off the game on the opening drive by quarterback Nick Athey. So the Panthers will kick off to the Scarlet Hawks left to right across your radio. It's about 55 degrees out there on the field here in Holliston. The set to kick it away is Mike Donovan. And it's an end over end kick, a high kick, which sells back to around the 17 yard line. And now the return upfield is breaking through for a pretty decent return to the 25 is Quinton Orr, about an eight yard return. And that's where the Milford Scarlet Hawks will start their first offensive drive of the game. Holliston did not make that extra point on that uh, last touchdown, two, six nothing here. But Milford. Got to keep establishing that clock possession like they did in Mar against the Mar uh, against Marlboro. <clears throat> so the Scarlet Hawks starting on the 24-yard line as quarterback John Hearns is set to go. He's going to go from the shotgun with a man in the backfield, a three-receiver set, two lined up to the left. It's going to be handoff, take it up the middle, breaking free is Jonathan Rodriguez, and he's still on his feet towards midfield, brought down out around the 45, a 21-yard run for Jonathan Rodriguez. And this is exactly what Milford needs to, to um, come back against that last touchdown. Move the ball and keep the ball in the fast pace. As the Scarlet Hawks line it up right on the 45. Hearns is going to go with a back to either side. It's a two receiver set, one lined up to either side. He's going to give it to Rodriguez again, who's going to sweep to the right side. He has an opening at the 40. Now the 35 brought down towards the 30. There is a flag down on the field but it is about a 15-yard pickup for Rodriguez. Looking to see what the refs say here. This may be coming back. And yeah, I don't see Milford moving up. Yeah, this one is, looks like it might come back. The official's going to have a discussion. They're talking to Zach Elkinson Flag right now. Let's see what the rule no is. No official rule, oh. That's against Milford yeah. and chop block. Nah, that's a vicious, uh, vicious block too to give to somebody. Didn't quite see the extent of it, but clearly the official got a good view of it, so that'll push Milford back. And that just kind of that just hurts too. You know, two big uh, gains right there. Milford trying to answer off of that early touchdown. Nick Athey was just in command in that possession, throwing the ball, rushing, finding gaps. I mean. What a great replacement. You know, you can definitely tell he may have been a running back. So the Scarlet Ox push back to the 36-yard line. And now they'll be fighting from deep. As Hearns lined up with a back to either side, two receivers said he's going to hand it off to Abrego, who's going to sweep to the left side, gets around a couple of defenders, and will work his way up back to the 46, but a 10-yard gain there for David Abrego. 
Look, Milford getting back to the original line of scrimmage there. Run game's pretty solid for on both sides uh, to start this game. Well, I think you're going to see a good offensive yeah. clash here tonight. A lot of good running backs on both teams. Uh, both quarterbacks can throw. This should be Just wait till they the start game. passing. This could be a big shootout. Hearns lined up with a back to either side. A man in the slot to the right, and the receiver spread out to either side. It's a handoff to Abrego, who's going to be brought down in the backfield, and he is shooken up. He's grabbing that left yes, knee as he was brought down at around the 40-yard line. That's about a six-yard loss for Abrego. The defense saw that coming, and unfortunately, he is down hurt, and you certainly hope he's okay as David Abrego, the senior, one of Milford's key running backs, He's down on the field, so we'll take a timeout with the injury. 8-10 left to go in the first quarter. Holliston on top of Milford, 6-0 on WMRC First Class Radio. Streaming online at the Media Center at WMRCDailyNews.com. So the Scarlet Hawks with the ball, the snap, and the throw downfield. It is over the head of the intended receiver, Stephen Luna. And that, was, and that was Zach Lanzetta throwing downfield. So they bring in Lanzetta there well, for I, the passing play, and that brings up fourth down for the Scarlet Hawks. Well, I think the reason why Lanzetta was in, because John Hearns and Jack DeSantis both carried David Abrego off the field, and he did not walk off under his own power. And uh, keep you posted on his uh, condition. So it is fourth and 13 now for the Scarlet Hawks from the 42, 7.57 left to go. And you would think here they're going to punt it away as they are lining up Pat Lahane in the backfield to punt it away. The snap and the punt. And it is a straight punt, roller in the air. Flows back to about the 22. Elkinson on the return. It trips up at around the 32. And there is a flag that came flying in towards when Elkinson was tripped up. And I think he tripped over his own feet uh, Yeah, I think he just kind of skittered there and uh, trying to do a little shake and bake. And now the officials discussing what the flag is all about. And that's going to be against Hollison. Looks like a hold. That'll push Holliston back to the 22-yard line, or the 21, rather. And that's where the Panthers will start their second drive of the game. Holliston is up 6-0, and you saw Milford get some momentum going, but then an injury to David Abrego certainly didn't help. And, and the, uh, the penalty, the uh, chop block penalty. Right. So now Nick Athey is... Going to come back out with the Panthers offense lined up in the gun, a back to his left, a four receiver set, two to either side with a man in the slot to either side. And he is going to fake the handoff and now does hand it off. And that's only a pickup of about a yard or two for McIsaac. Thomas Troutwine on the tackle there for the Scarlet Hawks. Now going from the pistol is Athey, a man in the backfield. Once again, a four receiver set with two to either side. He's going to take it himself this time as he sweeps to the near side. Finds a little bit of an opening. It looks like he got the first down there. He's brought out of bounds at about the 36-37. So you can credit that little carry there. Credit Athey with uh, 16 yards. There's a flag and there more than likely will be on Holliston. We'll see. I was surprised Athey was able to slip through that gap. Walk in the back. They got walk in the back yep. for Holliston. That's going to push them back. And that was the same penalty they had on the kickoff too. Illegal block in the back. And you know some of these these penalties are hurting both sides. The holding, chop blocks. I mean. And these officials, they're not going to let anything go, it no. doesn't seem tonight no, either. No, it does not. They, but they, if they can stay consistent throughout the whole game, I think, you know, they called the good game. The so ball is on the 23-yard line now for the Holliston Panthers. So far, a slower-moving game here at Comedian Field. 
Well, it certainly has. I mean, the, uh, the a touchdown. A lot of stoppages. The opening touchdown was a minute eight for Holliston. And they're already approaching a minute right now in this possession. And that will be first and long for Holliston. It'll wipe out a 16-yard run by Nick Athey. And now Athey's going to line up in the gun with a back to his left. It's a four-receiver set. Two to either side with two spread out to the right. Man in the slot to the left. Motion now from right to left. Athey takes the snap. It's a handoff to the motion man, which is Elkinson, as he's going to sweep to the left side and will be brought down. A pickup of maybe a couple for Elkinson. Sean Arquilano on the tackle. They mark it at the 29-yard line. It's about a four or five-yard pickup. Panthers line it back up this time. Athy in the gun, a back to his right, a four receiver set, two spread out to either side. Athy gets the snap, looking downfield. He takes it himself, finds a hole right up the middle, and he is at the 40 yard line, breaks a tackle, and will be brought down at around the 44. And that is going to be enough for a Holliston Panthers first down. Milford needs to make that adjustment to close that gap right up the middle. Nick Athy has just exploited it this whole game and picked up some really good yardage. A 15 yard pickup there for Athey. This time lined up in the gun, a man in the backfield, four receiver set, back to pass, looking downfield. He is going to take this himself. Finds Elkinson at the 40, it is complete. And Elkinson brought down at the 35 yard line. And on the tackle there was Ryan Nesta. But that does give the Holliston Panthers another first down. For another Panther, first down. The ball marked. At the 36. And a flag off the snap on the next play. This is go likely on Hollis then. Right. Oh, timeout, Milford. There's no flag. Milford called the timeout. Milford called the timeout there. The official throwing the flag just to stop the game. But again, the Scarlet Hawks having a little bit of trouble defensively. Well, Coach Todd taking a timeout at the right point here because Holliston has just revved up this no huddle offense again and has just ran, ran down this field. These penalties that Holliston has accrued has done absolutely nothing to benefit Milford. First and 10 on the 36 for the Holliston <coughs> Panthers. 6.02 left to go. Holliston already with a six to nothing lead as Athey lines up in the gun, a man in the backfield, four receiver set, two to either side, with a man in the slot to either side. As Athey will await the snap from the gun, takes the snap and he will fake the handoff and take it up the right side and be brought down just past the 30. There is a flag on the play, fought his way to around the 27 yard line for about a nine yard pickup. This flag is going to be holding against the Holliston Panthers. That'll push them back to the 41. The Panthers now have first and 15 from the 41. Zathy again lined up in the gun, a man in the backfield, a four receiver set. Two spread out to the right, a man in the slot to the left. Athey takes the snap, fakes the handoff, play action, throws downfield, and has a receiver. It is complete. Past the 20 yard line is where Andrew Kame will be brought down. So Andrew Kime makes the catch. It is a first down, a 21 yard pickup. The junior getting involved. And the Panthers line it right up. They don't huddle much. This time Athey in the pistol. Another four receiver set with a man in the backfield. It is going to be a handoff this time. Up the middle goes Matt McIsaac for a pickup of one or two. Yeah, let's go back to that prior play. Athey looking like he was gonna take off again. Stutter step, stops and throws for a great completion. And just keeps moving this ball efficiently. 5.02 and ticking for the Holliston Panthers. When, when, I'll talk to you about that next play. 
Matthew lined up in the gun, a man in the backfield, a four receiver set, two to either side. Going to fake the hand up, takes it himself up the middle for little to no gain. I was just going to say there, Milford needs to bring the pressure here, back to, backs against the wall here. You don't want to go down two scores already. Third down and nine to go now for the Holliston Panthers. Big stop coming up here for Milford. Athey lined up in the pistol, man in the backfield, a four receiver set, two to either side, takes the snap, play action now, rolls out to his right, looking downfield, in trouble, looking to throw, he's going to take it himself, has an opening, and he is going to be brought down at the nine yard line, turns nothing into something, and turn it into quite a nice pickup. A nine yard Nick, pickup there for Athey. Nick Athey eluding two tackles and coming extremely close to a first down, if not has a first down. And I hate to say it, but Milford wasn't very aggressive getting no, to they there. No, well the thing is with Nick Athey is that he can stop and then just throw right over your head. So I mean, you be aggressive with him, he can just dump right over your head. If you, if you don't, you'll just take off and run. I mean, it's hard to figure this kid out. Right, now I think the official's talking about where to mark it. They're gonna see if this is a first down. This is really close. I say he was just down around the uh, I think Ten and a half, probably. I thought it was a little short, but of course the measurement will have the ultimate ruling. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, they're probably going to go for it here if there's... I think he is short. Just yep. a little bit short. Yeah, fourth and inches here. If you're the Panthers, unless you have a good kicker, you go for it here. Well, yeah, in that case, too. If you don't get it, I mean, you're going to turn the ball deep over in Milford's zone anyway, so right. you might as well. And they will. We'll keep Nick Athey and the offense on the field. And in this case, too, if on fourth and inches here, you've got to close that middle gap there. Nick Athey could just run forward there and pick up a first down. Flush him out to the left or to the right and make him work for it. We'll see how the Milford defense can hold up. They've had a pretty good goal line defense in the recent seasons. And now it's going to come in use as they are going to crowd that line but of course, you have to keep an eye on some of these receivers, too. Let's see how they line up their receivers here, too. They could also just try to see if they'll jump off sides, give them an easy. Athey was lined up on center. Now they switch it up. They got McIsaac on center now with uh, Barrett in the backfield. And taking it up is McIsaac. And Barrett, excuse me, ended up taking it up. And that is going to be very close. And he did get the first down. So enough there for Barrett, nice job, and tried a little bit of trickery and just gave Barrett that little run up the right hash marks. And now again, they line up Barrett on center, and he is going to take it himself. This time will be brought down for nothing. That's actually <laughs> the same exact going to be play. a loss, right? Milford wasn't fooled on that one. Yeah, I don't, see, I don't see Nick Affey out there on the field. That, that's a good goal line play. I don't know why you try to run that again. No. Matthews. Looks like they're almost they keep running this wildcat right now. Right, still not on the field. Barrett again on center. A couple men in the backfield. Now they hand it off to Elkinson. He's sweeping to the left side and he gets into the end zone. Totally fooled was the Milford Scarlet Hawks. That's a nine yard touchdown run for Zach Elkinson. And just when uh, we started to wonder what they were doing out there, they knew exactly what they were doing. We'll keep running the same play, but I do not, uh, I see Nick Athey out there right now. We didn't nope. see him there before. They were at like two or three uh, crowded in the center. And I they, think Nick Athey was out on the uh, left-hand side there blocking. Right. I did not see him under center at all. Well, now they're going to go for two, and Barrett again lined up on the center, and they are going to go with the handoff up the right hash, it will be no good. The Holliston Panthers on top of the Milford Scarlet Hawks, 12 to nothing, a nine yard touchdown run by Zach Elkinson. Puts Holliston up by two scores on WMRC First Class Radio Sports. The Holliston Panthers set to kick off left to right across your radio to the Milford Scarlet Hawks. There's another touchdown. And that time was by Zach Elkinson. It's an end over end kick, and that is going to be a legal procedure as it sails out of bounds on the near side towards the 15. If I was Milford here, I'd take the illegal procedure call. Certainly get those extra yards, yeah. and I'm sure they will. 
as the offense will come out with pretty good field position. And that prior, on those couple prior plays last time, looked like Nick Athey was lined up in a tight end zone, came across over to center and was get, um, grabbing that ball quickly. And I think he was in on that two-point conversion try, I think, but that was unsuccessful. Right, it was three straight yeah. Wildcats. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the two-point conversion attempt. And now the Scarlet Hawks offense back on the field. Zach Lanzetta out there in the pistol. It's a two-back set, a back to his left, a man in the backfield, two receivers lined up to the right. Lanzetta takes the snap. It's going to be a run up the middle. That's going to be one or two yards. That was Jonathan Rodriguez on the carry. Yeah, I do not see John Hearn on the field. Yeah, Zach Lanzetta out there right now, and yeah. we've talked about this. It could be a competition between Hearns or Lanzetta well, or shared playing time. Exactly. Both of them have good arm, good arms, good instincts. Well, Lanzetta only came into the Marble game when they were only down 16 to six, so it looks like it's almost like a quarterback up, uh, by committee to open up this season. Right, I think they're testing him. Yeah. Lanzetta again lined up in the pistol, back to his right, uh, two receivers set a receiver spread out to either side play action rolls out to his right has a target and it's complete pass midfield to the 40 the 30 to the 20 the 10 and into the end zone goes leandro maranta the junior for the touchdown Twelve to six. Look at that. The Scarlet Hawks striking right back, and that is a 61-yard touchdown reception by Le Leonardo Maranta. That's a name we haven't seen yet this season, Jared. No, we have not. So now for the extra point is Pat Lahane. Lahane calling out to Will Johnson who comes in from the sideline. The snap and the kick. End over end kick, sails through and the Scarlet Ox right back in the game, it's 12 to seven. The Scarlet Hawks set to kick off right to left across your radio. And how about that? Zach Lanzetta comes in the game and throws a 61 yard touchdown reception to Leonardo Maranta. He's kicking it off is Pat Lahane. It's a short end over end kick. It'll That's drop a at the ball. 25, a live ball. And it's Milford's picked got it. by the Scarlet Ox. Milford has it. John Arquilano picks it up. And the Milford Scarlet Ox have recovered and how about this momentum shift? The ball marked at the 25-yard line, and the Milford offense will come back onto the field. And it'll be interesting to see who the quarterback is, and it's Zach Lanzetta heading back out there. Lanzetta lined up in the gun. Uh, Back to his left, man in the backfield, two receivers spread out to the right side. Lanzetta takes the snap. He will hand it off to Quinton Orr, who will take it up the middle for one or two. Scarlet Hawks with a big opportunity here. We're still in the first quarter, I by know, the way. A lot of action going on so far. Two minutes left to go in the first quarter. It's a 12 to seven Holliston lead for Milford. Well, they just got done scoring a 61-yard touchdown reception, and now they recover the kickoff. And they have another opportunity here deep into Holliston territory. Lanzetta lined up in the gun with Quinton Orr to his right. Three receivers to the right side with a man in the slot to spread out. Lanzetta takes the snap. He's going to roll out to his right, throws to his right, has a target. It is complete, and that will be a first down and a little more. It's Steven Luna on the reception at around the 15 yard line. Milford having the advantage and starting a stunner here in Holliston. So about a 10 yard pickup on that play. First and 10. At the 13 yard line. 
As Lanzetta lined up with a back to either side, receiver spread out to the right. It's a handoff to the right back, a sweep to the left, working his way past a number of tacklers, brought down inside the five, out of bounds of Sean Aquilano, about an eight-yard pickup. So a nice gain for the senior. Second down, three to go. They mark it at about the six yard line. John Hearns now back in the game. Back to either side, lined up in the pistol. Receiver spread out to the right. Hearns is going to take this himself. Takes it up the right hash marks. A pickup of maybe one or two. Credit him with two yards on that one. That'll make it one yard to go. Third and two. For the Scarlet Hawks, third down. Hearns still out there for Milford. Yeah, how about that, Jared? You called a quarterback guy by a committee. Yeah. Hearns lined up in the pistol, back to either side, two receivers spread out to the left. And uh, this is going to be handoff taken up the right side, like Quinton Orr. And that is going to be very close. I think this is going to be fourth down for Milford. Keep in mind, uh, keep in mind they can get a first down on this play here. I. And now it looks like timeout. Yeah. The Scarlet Hawks going to burn another time. Actually, that's the end of the quarter, excuse me. Oh, 12 to seven at the end of the first quarter. How about that? That quarter was so long, Wild we didn't even one. know it was over. Yeah, we were really enthralled in that one. Wild way to start the game. The Scarlet Hawks have the ball deep in Halston territory on WMRC First Class Radio Sports. John Hearns lined up in the pistol, a man in the backfield. Receiver spread out to either side. He takes the snap. It's going to be handoff. Jonathan Rodriguez in trouble in the backfield. And he's brought down for a big loss on fourth down. And that is about a six yard loss for Rodriguez. And Hollison will have the turnover on downs. And that is big for the Panthers. You allow Milford to recover the kickoff deep in your own territory. To let them right back in the game with that 61 uh, yard touchdown reception earlier to Leonardo Maranta. I think a good on that. job there by the defense stopping Milford and getting the Holliston offense right back on the field. As Nick Athey comes back out, lined up in the gun. Back to his right, it is a three receiver set, a high snap. He is able to. To get to it, though, he will take this himself up the middle, pushing away a couple of tacklers, a pickup of maybe one or two for the quarterback. Nick Athey was a, the, the key running back for the Holliston Panthers last season. Now the quarterback, this time he's lined up again in the gun with a back to his left. It is going to be a handoff to McIsaac, who has an opening, and he will get a first down and a little more as he gets it up to about the 30-yard line. It's marked at the 28, a 15-yard pickup for McIsaac. So the chains keep moving, so does the offense. Athey again in the gun. It's another run up the middle on the draw play, a pickup of about one or two. One thing I noticed about Nick Athey is immediately after he hands the ball off, he is immediately blocking. Yep, handoff to McIsaac and immediately gets ready to block. Now McIsaac out of the game. Athey lined up in the gun, back to his left. It's a four receiver set. Three spread out to the left side. Athey's going to roll out into the near side flats and avoids one tackler. And now he is going to be brought down by a couple, but he is able to pick up the first down as he gets to about the 42. That's about 11 yard pickup by the quarterback. Nick Athey getting the job done on his feet, just continuing to go downfield. Yeah, if the middle's all blocked up, he's taking it to the uh, to left or right. I mean, he's just exploiting every single uh, gap Milford's given them. Panthers moving right to left across your radio as Athey in the gun, a back to his right. Two receivers stacked up in the slot on the right side and a receiver spread out to either side, rolling out to his right, and he'll overthrow Elkinson there, and that'll bring up second and 10. Elkinson, number 28. 
and Austin still being relentless on this no huddle offense. They are, they have not huddled up a whole no. lot as they continue to rush to the line of scrimmage. They're running the constant two minute drill. And they're trying to tire out this defense, but this is what they practice. They practice mm -hmm. this high pressure offense. They practice this quick paced offense. And not really huddling up all game long as Athey lined up in the gun, back to his left. Three receivers spread out to the right side with the lone man spread out to the left. As Athey calls it out, takes another high snap and there is flag on the play. I think someone jumped on that offensive line. And that will be a five yard penalty against the Panthers. And that's the problem with quick pace offenses. Sometimes you get someone that'll jump. Ball pushed back to the 37. That'll make it second and 15 to go for Holston. 9-16 and counting left in the first half. A 12-7 game. Nick Athey lined up in the gun. Uh, back to his left four receiver set. Three spread out to the right. Takes the snap. He's going to sweep up to the left side. Eludes one tackler. And now pushed out of bounds at around the 43-yard line. And that is going to get Holston back to around the initial line of scrimmage. So about six yards there for Athey. Milford needs a big stop. Athey lined up in the gun, uh, back to his left. Two receivers in the slot, to the right with a receiver spread out to either side. Athey takes the snap, looking downfield. He's going to throw. Throws to his right, a deep pass downfield, and that is hauled in. What a catch, Zach Elkinson with two defenders on him. Pulls it in at the 25 yard line. A big first down for the Holliston Panthers. That's a 43 yard pickup. Nick Athey showing his arm now. And now again, Athey lined up in the gun with a man in the backfield. This is going to be a run by Mick Isaac who finds a hole up the middle and he's going to take it all the way into the end zone. A 25 yard touchdown run. Matt Mick Isaac finding a wide open gap. As he went right up the right hash marks to give Hollison their third touchdown of the game. And it is now an 18 to seven football game. Now a timeout will be called prior to the extra point. Hollison going to attempt to. Athey lined up in the gun. Elkinson lined up to his left. Motion from left to right. He's going to take the snap. He's going to take this himself. Wide open gap on the left side. And he is able to slip in for two to put the Hollison Panthers on top of the Milford Scarlet Hawks. 20 to 7. 8.37 left to go in the first half. Can the Scarlet Hawks respond? Find out next on WMRC First Class Radio Sports. High school football on WMRC, first class radio, a 20 to seven game. As the Holliston Panthers comfortably on top of the Milford Scarlet Hawks, they will kick off right to left across your radio. Set to kick it away is Mike Donovan. And that is off a 25 yard touchdown run by Matt McIsaac. The kickoff sails to the far side to about the 20 yard line, takes a hop before it is picked up and returned to around the 25 on the far side of the field. And that's where the Milford Scarlet Hawks offense will start. Jared, we've seen this Milford offense have some success in this game, but the big problem is the defense can't stop this run. Well, in that last possession there where they did get that um, uh, onside recovery, Zach Lanzetta let him down on the goal line, and then John Hearns comes in. I mean, I, I really do like the uh, whole quarterback battle going on here, but let him take it in, you know? Well, Hearns is out there right now. He's lined up in the gun with a back to his right. Three receivers to the right side as he takes the snap, looks to the right side. He's going to throw down field, and that is an off pass intercepted by Zach Elkinson. He was aiming for Pete Schuler, the tight end, but that was right to Elkinson. And it doesn't look like he got a very good lift on that pass, intercepted at the... 41 yard line, so the Panthers get the ball right back. Will take over. Good defensive coverage there by Elkinson. He was 
just so big last season for the Hollis and Panthers in that tremendous playoff run they had on both sides of the ball. We had that tremendous reception uh, prior to that drive, setting up that touchdown, uh, uh, touchdown run, and now he gets an interception. Although I think that was kind of a gimme there. I think that just kind of slipped out of Hearn's hand and just floated in the air. Right. Yeah, you could tell right the, away yeah. that something was wrong with that pass. Yeah. Athy lined up in the gun. A man in the backfield. Four receivers set. Three spread out to the right side. Athy takes the snap. Looking to the left. He will throw to the left. And it will be Mike Donovan on the reception. He will get awfully close to the first down. But an eight-yard pickup there by the junior. That pass play is good for a Panther. And correction, he did get the first down. I thought he stepped out earlier, but that does move the chains. A 10-yard pickup. Ball mark now at around the 30-yard line. Athey lined up in the gun. A man in the backfield. Three receivers set. Two spread out to the right. Back to pass. Has all kinds of time. He's going to take it himself up the middle. And now up the near side. And will be brought out of bounds at around the 20-yard line. Scrambled down to the 21-yard line. Second down, three. So seven-yard pickup they'll give Athy there. As the Panthers will get right back up to the line of scrimmage. Athy lined up in the gun, a man in the backfield. Three receiver set, two spread out to the right. It's a handoff to McIsaac, who fights his way up the middle. And he's brought down inside of the 10. Another Panthers first down, and they are just having no problem, Jared. Yeah. And now, again, they line up Athy in the gun, a man in the backfield, and this play is going to be blown dead. I think this is going to be against Holliston. No timeout, Milford uh, there called, and this defense, they're just struggling against this Holliston run game. A full timeout on the field, 7.48 left to go. We'll take one as well on WMRC First Class Radio Sports. 7.48 left to go in the first half, and the Holliston Panthers on top of the Milford Scarlet Ox, 20 to seven, as they continue to drive downfield they have the ball at the 10-yard line. It's first and goal for the Holliston Panthers. As Athey lined up in the gun, a man in the backfield, a three-receiver set with two spread out to the right, and a flag even before the snap. I'm assuming this is going to be a false start on Holliston, but let's see. Officials disgusting here. Delay. Could be a delay game. Roachman. Oh, and Roachman on the defense, so that shoots Milford in the foot, moves Holliston up five yards. So it's first and goal now from the five. First down and goal to go with the penalty now from the five-yard line. Athey this time lined up in the pistol, man in the backfield, a four-receiver set, three spread out to the right, and this is going to be handoff to Mick Isaac, who's brought down in the backfield. It's going to be a small loss for the Panthers. The guys that tackled in the backfield for a loss. Let's see where they mark this. Back to the nine yard line. So Second four yard loss there low. for McIsaac. And again, Athy lined up in the pistol. Man in the backfield. He's going to throw to the right side. And it is no, no good. No good. Incomplete. There are flags on the play. Flag right. On coverage. It looks like Steven Luna. It looks like it's probably. Yeah. So pass interference on Milford. This is going to move Panthers into very good field position. It's marked out around the one. Excuse me, they move it up to the three. First down and goal to go. Affy lined up in the pistol. Man in the backfield, two receivers to the right. Taking himself up the middle, has a gap and will 
He's brought down inside of the end zone. A three yard touchdown run for Nick Athey. The Allison Panthers are now in control as they go up 27 to seven with 7.03 left to go in the first half. Going to go for two once again. Athey lined up in the pistol. Man in the backfield. Two receivers to the right side. And he will take this right up the middle for the easy two points and some extra curricular activity after the play. And Milford, I think, getting a little feisty here as the defense has not had a whole lot of success tonight. Well, I also think, too, going for two-point uh, conversion off the touchdown, I think it's kind of wearing on Milford. Uh, not even trying to attempt an extra point. All right, so 29 to seven is the score. We'll take a timeout on WMRC First Class Radio Sports. And welcome back to high school football on WMRC First Class Radio, a 28 to seven lead as the Holliston Panthers complete the two point conversion and it was unnecessary roughness called against the Scarlet Hawks. So the Panthers will be able to kick off now from the Milford 45 yard line. And with the leg of Mike Donovan, a good chance he can get this in the end zone. And Milford was not too happy after that last score. Donovan set to kick it away. An end over end kick to the far side and will be fielded at the five yard line. And trying to come up field, it is. Jonathan Rodriguez, it was returned to around the 20, but there is a flag on the play, came all the way from the far side to the near side on the return. I think you may have an illegal block in the back here. Or it could be a hold, that is going to be a hold against the Scarlet Hawks. That will push them back a little bit, but if you're Milford, this game's not over. It's a three possession game, 6.52 left still in the first half. There's plenty of time. Well. When you're only down 12-7 and you get stuffed on the two-yard line, almost going to take the lead of this game, that's really the difference of this game. And plus the interceptions that uh, interception that John Hearn just threw and uh, gave up some points here. But you're right, Tom. There's still plenty of football to play here tonight. Well, and with this Milford offense, if, if they can get any momentum going and this defense can make some stops, they can get right back into it. John Hearns looks like he is back out there. Lined up in the pistol, back to either side. It's going to be a handoff taken up the left side, about a yard or two. On the carry, it was Jonathan Rodriguez. Hearns again, lined up in the pistol, back to either side, receiver spread out to the right, takes the snap. It's a handoff to the left back up the far side hash to around the 10 yard line from the four, a six yard pickup for Arc Milano. 6-10 and counting left to go in the first half. And Milford trying with the quick offense now, back to either side of Hearns and he will hand it off again this time to the right back, finding a wide open gap on the far side of the field to the 40 at midfield and brought down in Holliston territory at around the 40 yard line. It was Jonathan Rodriguez. There is a flag on the play. It looks like the flag came after, yeah. maybe with some extracurricular activity, but that is going to be a 50 yard pickup pending the penalty. And Milford still has a lot of fight left in them. So a big pickup. Holliston. Timeout for Holliston now. 5.52 left to go. And the Scarlet Hawks, they have some momentum going. This game is far from over. This is not the same Milford team we saw last year. They have offensive skill. The only problem they're having tonight is stopping Holliston defensively. They can't stop this run. The only thing that looms is the, uh, the being stuffed at the two and the interception for Milford right now. Otherwise than that, they've been 
fairly neck and neck with Hollister. Keep in mind, Hollister is 2-0, and and they are uh, they're staying on pace so far. And we see and Milford. Let's not mention, I don't mean to interrupt you, Tom, but let's not forget, Milford will be getting the ball to start the third quarter after the half. Now let's keep this in mind. Quinton Orr out there right now as the left back. Sean Aguilano, Jonathan Rodriguez have been holding down the fort, but we've seen them keep Quinton Orr fresh for a lot of the first half, but maybe now they're going to rush him out there and try to get into the end zone as Hearns is set to line up in the pistol with a back to either side. A receiver spread out to the right. Hearns takes the snap. Play action now. Takes it himself up the middle past the 30. Brought down at around the 27-yard line. What a three-yard pickup. If I can build on that prior comment with Quentin Orr in the play, keep in mind David Abrego went out early in the game with apparent ankle or knee injury and has not returned. Yeah, it looked like a knee injury yeah. was grabbing that knee. Certainly hope it's not an ACL or anything that would keep him out. Burns again lined up in the pistol, back to either side with a back in front on the left, and it is a handoff. Quinton Orr sweeping up the left side, has a gap. There is a flag on the play. He is past the 20, brought down inside the 15 out of bounds. About a 15 or 16 yard pickup pending the flag. There might have been a hold. Holding yep, holding against Milford. This one's coming back. So unfortunate for Milford. But I think Quentin Orr is going to start to have a much bigger role in this game as you do not want to get too far down. Yeah, he's been, util been utilized right now as that third down back, but I think they're going to start picking him up more and more plays here, giving him some more opportunity and more reps. The Scarlet Hawks now at the 37-yard line. Will be second and long, second and 17. A timeout called by the Milford Scarlet Hawks. A full timeout called on the field. We'll take one as well on WMRC First Class Radio. 5-12 left to go in the first half. The Holliston Panthers on top of the Milford Scarlet Hawks, 28 to seven. But the Scarlet Hawks are driving. It is second and 17 from the Panthers, 30. As Hearns will line up with a back to either side, a receiver spread out to the right. The backs are Rodriguez to the left, a throw to the left side, and it is incomplete to his intended target, Jonathan Rodriguez. Is Rodriguez on the left, Aquilano on the right. And Zach Lanzetta back in the game. All right, so they're going to bring Lanzetta yeah. in. Now this is interesting. Yeah. And you have to think, they're bringing Lanzetta in. They're going to try some passes. Yeah, Lanzetta has the uh, the ability to throw more passes, and he's he's got more accuracy than John Hearns. John Hearns runs a different type of uh, game. Ball at the 30-yard line. Lanzetta with a back to either side. Takes the snap, looking downfield, throws to the right side. A nice spiral, but over the head of Pete Schuler for the incomplete pass. And will bring up fourth down. In this case, you have to go for it. I do like the uh, confidence of going deep uh, for Lanzetta to that place. Fourth and nine. Strelodox going to go for it here. We'll see who they put on the field as the quarterback. It's still Lanzetta. This is a big play for the Milford Scarlet Ox. They want to try to get back into this game. Can't come away empty handed with this, uh, this drive. So a long way to go, but you certainly want to try to make it work. And Lanzetta lined up with a back to his left, uh, back in front as well. A four receiver set with two to either side, takes the snap, looking downfield, throws up the middle, it's off the hands of a defender and away from Pete Schuler. And it's incomplete, a turnover on downs will give the Holliston Panthers back the ball. And they will have it on their own 29 yard line. And at this point, if you're the Holliston Panthers, try to eat up the clock. Yeah, I think that would be the case here. You do not want to give Milford an opportunity to get more points on the board. And like I was mentioning before, getting the ball back in the third quarter to start the game. You do not want to give Milford the sway advantage. 
and melted a comeback. Well, and the problem is I think they have been trying to eat up the clock, but they keep scoring too quick because this Milford defense, it's having big trouble stopping this running game. As Athey lined up in the gun, a man in the backfield. It is a four receiver set, two lined up to either side. Athey takes the snap, looking downfield, under pressure, rolls out to his left, eludes the defender, still on his feet at the 30, past the 35 up to the 40 before he's pushed out of bounds on the near side. And that is going to be a Panthers first down more than likely. Yeah, I just want to build on that prior comment, Tom, that dri the drive, the uh, there's third touchdown of the game. It's a 92 yard drive, only two minutes and 16 seconds. Their first possession was a 78 yard drive, minute possession. 12-yard pickup total. Athey again in the gun. Man in the backfield. Three receivers spread out to the right. One man to the left. He is going to take it himself up the near side and will be pushed out past the 50-yard line. That is about a seven or eight-yard pickup before Ryan Nesla pushes him out of bounds. Up to the 49. They credit him nine yards on that play. Nick Athey continuing to get the job done on his feet and I'll tell you, Jared, we haven't seen this Milford defense struggle so much with the run in a long time. Uh, yeah, exactly. They're just being able to find the gaps and, and talking that after this play. Athey lined up in the pistol, man in the backfield, three receivers to the right, one to the left. It's going to be a handoff to McIsaac, who tries up the middle, runs into trouble, and now take it to the near side, brought out of bounds inside the 45. And that is going to be enough for the first down. A four-yard pickup for McIsaac. Yeah, Hollison's just been able to pick up good blocking coverage and also being able to pick up the gaps. 4.15 and counting. Athey again lined up in the pistol. Man in the backfield. Two receivers spread out to either side. Takes the snap. Looking to pass. And has all kinds of time. Well, now taking himself up the right hash and will take it inside the 30 yard line before he's finally brought down. Again, eluding a couple tacklers. And Milford, they're aiming their tackles high. They're not going for the legs. The, uh, this Hawson Panther offense is so quick, I cannot even get my own dissection in of the prior play. They are just that fast. 14 yard pickup there for Nick Athey. And yeah, a lot of missed tackles by Milford, especially in this drive. First and 10 from the 30, and now the Hollister Panthers, they're going to take some time here. They're going to let the clock run yeah, a little that's bit. A, that's a wise. Athey lined up in the gun, a man in the backfield, a three receiver set with two receivers to the right side. And actually make that trips bunch to the right side, a four receiver set as Athey will hand it off up the middle. It's Anthony Cordani on the carry for about a yard. So there they are, just going to Nick Milford up the field now, try to waste some clock. Athey lined up in the pistol, man in the backfield. Trips bunch to the right side, lone receiver to the left, and it's going to be a timeout call timeout. for Holliston. We are set for action. Big thank you to all our sponsors of high school football here on First Class Radio. Athey lined up in the gun, lone back in the backfield, a four receiver set, will take the snap, takes this himself up the middle and gets to around the 28, about a two yard pickup there for the quarterback. I think that was Nick Athey's shortest gain of the game. He's just been tearing up the field so far, right? In this first half and just been commanding this, so this whole game. He already has two touchdown, uh, two rushing touchdowns to his credit. He is going to line up in the pistol this time. Lone man in the backfield. It's a four receiver set, two spread out to either side. And he's looking to pass, throws to the left side. And it is just a little bit too far in front of his intended target, Andrew Kain. They're gonna. It's fourth and eight here, and they're more than likely going to go for it here. This is going to be a big, uh, this should be a big stop for Milford. Saw so Andrew Kain with a big 21 yard reception earlier in the game. 2.15 left as Athey lines up, this time in the gun, uh, back to his right, a three receiver set, two spread out to the right side, looks to his left, under pressure, will roll out to his right, throws downfield, and has a wide open target, and it's hold in for the 
28 yard touchdown reception. And that was Nick Inman on the reception for the touchdown. That'll put Hollison on top, 34 to seven. The fifth touchdown of the game for the Holliston Panthers. And now the Panthers lacking a kicker will go for two. Hathi lined up in the gun, a back to his right. A four receiver set motion from left to right. As the slot man motions, Athy takes the snap, looking downfield, going to take this himself up the left side, has a gap, and gets in for the two points. And that will put the Holliston Panthers on top of the Milford Scarlet Ox, 36 to 7. 205 left to go in the first half. We will take a timeout on WMRC First Class Radio Sports. The Holliston Panthers set to kick off right to left across your radio. 2.05 left to go in the first half. It is a 36 to seven Panthers lead. And the kickoff by Mike Donovan is end over end to about the 15 will be returned up the far side of the field to around the 30 yard line. Less than two minutes remaining. Less than two minutes now in the first half and this Seems like it's a, an NFL game with how long this half has lasted. Yeah, this is approaching an hour and a half half of this game. This game did get the 6 p.m. start due to the Holliston Panthers having their homecoming. <laughs> and yes, it is yeah. a very good thing <laughs> yes. it started early. Wouldn't be getting out of here at 11 o'clock if this keeps up. <laughs> As the Scarlet Hawks set to go, Hearns lined up with a back to either side, will take it himself up the middle, pick up of maybe a yard. Milford just struggling to find their way in this game, and a lot of it is the defense just not being able to stop the run. Yeah. And once your defense, they've given up a touchdown just about every Holliston drive, and that's just killed any momentum Milford has had going for Yeah, they, you're right, every drive Holliston's had, yeah, they have not punted once. Every single drive has resulted in a touchdown for the Holliston Panthers. Actually, there was one drive that was a turnover technically and a kickoff, but besides that, every drive has been a touchdown. Hearns lined up in the pistol, back to either side. It is a two receiver set, a receiver spread out to either side, and it is going to be taken up the middle and finding a bit of a gap, eluding a couple of tacklers uh, work his way up to around the 40 is Jonathan Rodriguez, and that's about a nine yard pickup. Nice job by Rodriguez, staying on his feet, and fighting his way upfield. Clock will continue running, 103 and counting left to go in the first half. Under one minute, less than one minute remaining in the half. Hearns lined up back to either side, and now there's a pause in the action. The official's coming out with below a minute left. I'm not sure what they were talking about there. I think they were talking about where to mark the ball, but we are set to continue. Are they correct? And actually, they're going to reward the Scarlet Hawks the first down. So credit Rodriguez with 10 yards on that carry, and we are set to go. The snap to Hearns, hand off to the left back, and again, it's Rodriguez. This time gets to around the 42-yard line. And that is uh, the 46-yard line, excuse me, a six-yard pickup for Rodriguez. Clock will continue running. 35 seconds and counting in the first half to go. Hearns lined up in the pistol. One back set this time. Rodriguez again on his feet, avoiding a couple of tacklers. Will get to the first down marker. That should be enough for Jonathan Rodriguez. And you certainly have to he, give Rodriguez credit. He's, he's struggling fighting oh, yeah. all game long. Yeah, he is fighting for those tough yards. So they'll move the chains again for Milford. And it looks like they are just going to run out the half here. They're not even going to go for the score. Unless they go for a deep pass here. Yeah. Which surprises me. I mean, 
you, you got to give your team the mentality that, hey, we still have yeah. another whole half of football. Yeah. We're not giving up. They should be going for the points right now. And I don't think it's going to happen. Clock's running, and John's taking too much time, and that's going to do that. Right? That'll yeah. be it for the half. Yeah. They, they won't even get the snap off. Yeah. I don't like that. You're down 36-7. to you got to keep going. And they started that drive with two minutes. They could have been really efficient there and got a, a score in before the half. But in any case, we will go into the halftime locker room with the Holliston Panthers on top of the Milford Scarlet Hawks. It's 36 to seven. Second half, the Holliston Panthers will be kicking off right to left across your radio in their red jerseys, white numbering and lettering, white trim down the side with the white H on the helmet, 36 to seven. The Holliston Panthers lead the Milford Scarlet Hawks who are in their white jerseys as this is an end over end kick. Sills back to about the 10. Quinton Orr is going to return it up the middle to about the 25 yard line. And that's where the Scarlet Hawks will start the second half of action as they try to get something going. They'll certainly have their work cut out for them trying to get back in this game. And there is an injured player on the field to start off the second half. And injured on the kickoff, it's a Holliston Panther who is down. Welcome back to Holliston High School as we are at Comedian Field and the injured player was Sam Athey, the brother of Nick Athey, and he walked off the field under his own power. John Hearns on the first snap of the second half for the Scarlet Hawks, rushes up the middle to about the 26, 27 yard line, about a two, three yard pickup to start things off for the Milford Scarlet Hawks. So Sam Athey was injured there. Nick Athey went over to check on his younger brother. Sam Athey, a sophomore, expected to be a very good contributor to this Holston team throughout his high school career. As Hearns with a back to either side will hand it off to Rodriguez, who's the left back. Rodriguez takes it up for maybe a yard. We've seen Jonathan Rodriguez, he's been the key running back all game long for the Scarlet Hawks, 86 yards in the first half. Ten oh two and counting, the Scarlet Hawks, they're gonna try to run the ball upfield, try to get some points. You know, if you're Milford here, you just gotta say, let's just get one back for now. Just right. Keep saying, you know, chip away at this lead, and you never know what's gonna happen. Still another half to play. They're going to play conservative for now. They've had some success on the run, so keep that going. Hearns with the back to either side. Two receivers lined up to the left. He will hand it off, and it's a sweep to the right side. A pick up of one or two. That was again Rodriguez. So that will bring up fourth down, and the Scarlet Hawks likely will punt it away. Fourth and eight, so they are going to put this one to the Holliston Panthers. The snap uh, is high, but he, Pat Lahane able to get a hold of it and gets off the punt. It will sail back to around the 45 in Holliston territory, and that's where Milford will down it, and the Panthers will start their first drive of the second half. 8.47 left to go. Matthew lined up in the gun. A one back set, two receivers to either side. Matthew takes the snap. It's a handoff to McIsaac. He's going to sweep up the near side. Gets by the 30 as he finds an opening into Milford territory. A big pickup of 24 yards for McIsaac. So again, finding holes on the edge are the Holliston Panthers. And, and you know, you got to give them a great, great effort here by exploiting every single hole and gap Milford has given them. Holliston has used it. Certainly taking advantage of the end around. Athey. In pistol, takes the snap, looking downfield. 
Throws downfield to his left, and he overthrows his target by a hair. Mike Donovan, the intended target, as he was going towards the end zone on that missed pass. Yeah, I think going for the home run ball there. So Halstead is not taking their foot off the gas pedal, no, despite being up by 29. Yeah. 8.14 left to go. You know, sending a message there, going for two. They do have a good, you know, not a really, I don't know about their kicking game, but their wide receiver, they have a wide receiver doing kicking, uh, kick on, kickoffs. Well, we know Todd Kiley will play it aggressive. He's playing extremely aggressive, that's my uh, guess. Matthew lined up in the pistol, back to his right, trips punch to the right side, it's a screen to the right side, brought down in the backfield is Zach Elkinson, a nice tackle by Sean Aquilano. Sean Aquilano, really one of the underrated players of this Milford team on both sides of the ball, contributes, has contributed greatly in the running game, but also contributes heavily defensively. A bit of a loss there for the Holliston Panthers. Third and 16, it's a loss of six. Seven thirty-seven and counting as Athey in the gun, back to his left, looking to pass, looks downfield. He will launch this downfield towards Elkinson and it is incomplete, double coverage downfield. Athey threw into Steven Luna was on coverage, nearly intercepted it. I think in this case, got a big lead, fourth and 16. Why not go for it? And it looks like that's what Athens do is getting the call from the sideline. Well, fourth and 16 now, and you wonder what they'll do here if they'll just put Milford uh, deep in their own territory or go for another home run ball. Yeah, they're yeah you know, just playing pitch and catch right now. I mean, Athens feels very confident to throw in a double coverage. And it would be some good confidence if this Milford defense could get a stop here. Athey in the gun, a back to his left. Receiver in the slot to the left side, too spread out to the right. Athey, all kinds of time in the backfield. He's going to take this himself. Up the middle, has an opening. There is a flag down, and he is going to take this all the way into the end zone. I think they just... It's a Hollison Panthers touchdown. A 38-yard touchdown run. There was a flag. I think that's why maybe Milford let up a bit because it is against Holliston. Well, we'll see, no call yet. All right, block in the yeah. back against Holliston. So this will take the Panthers back, fortunately for Milford. Yeah, I saw Milford just give up on that play and I think they knew it was against Holliston. So it'll be like, what, fourth and 26 now? Yeah, this is gonna push Holliston back yeah. 10 yards. And now they're just going to punt it away. Yeah, that's that's play the play the uh, field here. I think that's a smart yeah. thing to do. Yeah, looks like John Barrett, the sophomore, is going to line up to punt it away for Hollison. And that's their first punt of the game. Hollison. Yep, good effort there by the Milford defense. Barrett gets the snap, and it is. A wobbly punt, but high in the air. Takes a bounce at the 10, and it's picked up by Andrew Schneelock, and he runs into the end zone. How was he down? He never had it. Oh, they call him down by contact. So that's a big break for Milford. Huge break there for the Scarlet Hawks. <coughs> and Milford will start at their own seven yard line. Oh. A little stoppage in the action. It looks like the officials talking about something. Here we go, we are underway. Now another stoppage in the action. A lot of stoppages tonight, Jared. Yeah, I think they're just stopping that one to get the ref over in the right, on the left-hand side there of the field. Slanzetta out there now in the pistol, a two-back set, a back to either side, two receivers lined up. 
to the right. It is a handoff to the left back up for maybe a yard or two. There's Jonathan Rodriguez again on the carry. 6.39 and counting in the third quarter. Lanzetta still out there in the pistol, back to his left. Two receivers spread out to the left side with a man in the slot as well. Throw to the left side, it's intercepted by Zach Lanzetta. Excuse me, Zach Elkinson on the interception on the Lanzetta pass. So the Holliston Panthers get another interception, the second interception thrown by Lanzetta. Now the Panthers will have the ball deep into Milford territory to start things off with 6.13 left to go in the third quarter. Ball marked at the 27 yard line. As the Holliston Panthers offense comes back onto the field. They are lined up in a goal line formation. Again, another Wildcat formation. They do have Nick Athey to the left side. It's a handoff to Elkinson, who will take it up the middle to about the 24, about a three yard pickup for Elkinson. Only has 12 yards rushing, but does have a nine yard touchdown run. That was the second touchdown that Holliston scored in this game, which was in the first quarter. Seems like forever ago, huh? It does. <laughs> it's been a long, extended game here. Panthers again line up in a victory type formation as Barrett takes the snap, and it is a handoff taken up the middle. That is close to the first down. It's going to be a little bit short, about a four or five yard pickup. Again, that was Elkinson. Clock continues to run at about the five minute mark now. Third down, two for the Panthers. Barrett lined up on center at the in the slot to the left, Athy in motion. It's a pitch to Athy. He's going to take it up the right side. A wide open gap, and we'll get by an every defender into the end zone. And that is a Holliston Panthers touchdown. A 19 yard touchdown run from Nick Athy. Talk about putting a nail in the coffin, Jared. Yeah, that's his third of the game. You mentioned before he was a running back. <laughs> That's right, sixth touchdown of the game for the Holliston Panthers. Now they will try for the extra point. The extra point by Mike Donovan sails through. It's 43 to seven. The Holliston Panthers on top of the Milford Scarlet Hawks on WMRC First Class Radio, streaming online at the Media Center at WMRCDailyNews.com. The Holliston Panthers set to kick off right to left across your radio, and what a homecoming for the Holliston Panthers. Uh, yeah. A 43 to seven on the Scarlet Hawks, 443 left to go in the third quarter, an end over end kick, sails back to the 10. Quinton Orr is going to take this one upfield, takes it up the middle to about the 25, still on his feet, fighting his way forward actually and we'll get to around the 30. And Jared, you wonder, why hasn't Quentin Orr been present in this game? I don't know, he, you know, I think they've been going with um, Rodriguez more, and you know, coming off of the injury he had in the uh, middle of the season last year, I don't think they're trying to rush him along too, far, uh, too much. Quentin Orr is, he, he was used quite a bit against Marlboro and had a lot of success. And it's surprising you're not seeing him as much in this game, he is out there now. They line up Quinn Orr on the right side of 
Hearns and Rodriguez on the left. It's a pistol formation, and Hearns will hand it off to Orr, who will take it up the middle to about the 35, around a six-yard pickup there for Quentin Orr. They're only eight yards rushing on three attempts for Quentin Orr tonight. 415 and counting. Orr will stay on the field with Rodriguez. Again with the two back formation, one to either side. Hand off again up the middle. It's Orr for maybe a yard. Halston just crowding the middle. I think if you're the Milford, if you're the Scarlet Ox, you need to test those edges. Yeah, you know, in this case too, where you're you've just been running the ball now, you're you are down a substantial amount, but running the ball isn't getting you anywhere so far. So I'm trying to wonder wondering what their mentality is on this uh, drive. Well, it's not even that. The last two times you try to pass, it resulted in an interception which resulted in another Halston touchdown. So I can understand that, but at least run to the edges. Hearns lined up with the back again to either side. It's four to the right, and Rodriguez to the left. Two receivers to the right. Now a timeout's going to be taken on the field. 3.08, timeout called. 43-7, Halston Panthers are on top on WMRC First Class Radio Sports. The Milford Scarlet Hawks offense back on the field. Hearn still at quarterback in the pistol. Back to either side. Two receivers lined up to the right. It's going to be a handoff taken up the middle. And Rodriguez is going to be brought down at around the line of scrimmage. There is flags all over the field. Some extracurricular activity once again. Yeah, the tempers are uh, flaring for Milford. I don't know why the clock stopped. I guess on the penalty. Yeah, that's going against oh. Halston, too, and Milford, so these are going to be offsetting. It's a... It is fourth down, however, three to go. If you're the Scarlet Hawks at this point, I think you just got to go for it. Yeah. Looks like the offense is... No, I look... I brought the kicker out. Pat Lahane is out there, so they will punt this away. From the 35, the snap and the punt. There's a flag on the snap. And the punt sails back to the Holliston 35. Bounces forward a couple before it's down by the Scarlet Hawks. Interested to see what this flag is. That yeah, looks like an illegal formation, perhaps. Usually uh, before the snap, that's what it's going to be. The Panthers, they get the ball back again, and you know what? If you're Holliston, you're up 43 to seven. Put your backups out there. Rest your starters. Why risk them getting hurt? Especially uh, a guy like Nick Athey seems to be your go-to guy for this season. He's already posted three touchdowns. I believe he has two passing ones. And a handful of yards. Great game. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll be surprised if he's back out there. And it doesn't look like he is going to be back out there. Backups will come out for Holliston. And at quarterback, it's John Barrett, the sophomore. It's also a receiver as well from the shotgun. He's going to hand this off. It's a run up the middle. And that is going to bring the ball to the 43 yard line, a seven yard pickup on the run by Nick Inman. Two twenty-one and ticking in the third quarter still. As John Barrett, the new quarterback, looking to his sideline, going to get some good 
experience in this game. Still a whole another quarter to play. Barrett in the gun, a back to his left, a four receiver set, two lined up to either side. Takes the snap, he's going to take this himself as he sweeps up the near side and is going to get the first down and a little more. Brought out of bounds at around the 48 yard line. That'll move the chains. A six yard pickup by Barrett. Seven yards rushing on two attempts. 49 and ticking now in the third quarter. Panthers back to the line, Barrett in the gun, a man in the backfield, a four receiver set, two to either side. Barrett takes the snap, handoff, taken up the middle. Two or three yard pickup. Just running the ball now. That was Sam Ratcliffe on the last carry. Second and nine at the 50. Barrett in the gun, Ratcliffe in the backfield, a four receiver set, two to either side. Barrett takes the snap, and he will fake the handoff and take it up the middle. Down the right hash marks to the 45, a five yard pickup. Low a minute left to go, 39 seconds and ticking in the third quarter. Panthers, they get to rest their starters. A great effort by Nick Athey. Improved to three and oh. And Very good effort by the Holliston defense as well. Be a clear front runner this early season. There's a team to beat. Right, let's yeah. not forget as Barrett in the gun with a one back set, two to either side, throws to the right side. It's incomplete in front of his intended target. Let's not forget, too, the first two games that Holliston played this season were both on the road. So you already got two of the four road games you have to play out of the way and you get the W's. Yep. And then the rest is, you know, they're back heavy on the home games. Yep. So fourth and four, eight seconds left, and they will punt it away here. And the Scarlet Hawks at this point playing for pride, playing for a little bit of confidence, maybe get some touchdowns on the board, work out some things offensively, maybe try some passing plays. This is a learning experience for Milford. It's a high end over end kick, doesn't go very far. Takes a bounce in front of the 30 and then rolls back to around the 37 before it's down. And that's where the Scarlet Hawks will start in the fourth quarter as the third quarter has come to a close. It's a 43 to seven lead. The Holliston Panthers on top of the Milford Scarlet Hawks as we head to the final 11 minutes on WMRC First Class Radio Sports. The Scarlet Hawks do have the ball, and they have it at the 38-yard line on their own side of the field. As Hearns lined up with a back to either side, man in the slot to the left, to a receiver wide to the right and it is a handoff to Quinton Orr taken up the middle to around the 45 and that is an eight yard pickup. Quinton Orr's fifth rush of the game. As the clock continues to run. And now it is Lanzetta lined up with the back to either side. He'll throw to the left side. And a collision on the left side of the field. Looked like the two receivers there kind of bumped each other. As going downfield was Jonathan Rodriguez alongside Leonardo Maranta. We saw Maranta with a big 61-yard touchdown reception in the first quarter. Yeah, that touchdown got Milford on the board and back in the game early in the first quarter. Yeah, it was quite a way to start. Yeah. Elkinson still out there, back to either side. A receiver in the slot to the left, one spread out to the right. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, play action. Looking downfield, under pressure. Will take it up the middle and pick up a couple of yards there. That will be enough for the first down. About a two, three yard pickup for Elkinson. Elkinson showing off a little bit of speed there. 
10-10 and counting. Elkinson line up with a back to either side. A receiver in the slot, this time to the right side with one spread out to the left. Takes snap and hand it off to Rodriguez. Rodriguez sweeping up the right side and he's going to be brought out of bounds in Holliston territory just past the 50 yard line, about a three yard pickup. Nine thirty-five and counting. Lanzetta again with a back to either side. Receiver spread out to the left. Lanzetta takes the snap, looking downfield, throws downfield to the right side, has a target. It's complete to Jack DeSantis, and he is going to be pushed down just past the fifteen. A big reception there for Lanzetta. Jack DeSantis, we saw him have a couple good receptions in that win against Marlboro. It's marked at the 15, a 35 yard reception. And now it's a handoff to Rodriguez, sweeping up the right side and getting awfully close to the end zone, but pushed out just short. We'll see where they mark it. Not quite sure where he went out of bounds. Mark it at the four, so it was a 15-yard pickup. Lanzetta takes the snap on center, a handoff to Rodriguez, and Rodriguez is going to be pushed down as he tries to get over the defender, just short of the end zone. Another two yards there for Rodriguez. Second and goal. And excuse me, that was a touchdown. He did indeed get the four yards into the end zone. I did not see a signal until late, so Rodriguez did get the touchdown, and it's a 43-13 game. And now the extra point, and that will sail through, and the Holliston Panthers now lead the Milford Scarlet Hawks 43-14. We'll take a timeout on First Class Radio Sports. 8.45 left to go, a 43-14 lead. The Milford Scarlet Ox, they get a touchdown there, a four-yard run by Jonathan Rodriguez. And now they will kick off right to left across your radio. I think they try the onside here, Jared. <laughs> I, well, why, why not? not? You right, might as well. Yeah, why not? Give your onside some practice. And here we go. There. And it's an end over end kick, and it is a shallow kick. Sails back to around the 30. And on that kick was uh, Pat Lahane, and his return maybe four or five yards before he was taken down by Matt McIsaac. Now the Holliston Panthers, they will bring the backups back on the field, get them some experience. Try to waste the clock and walk away with the first home victory of the season as this is their first home game of the season. Austin already 2-0 and on the season. Won a couple of away games to start things off. Barrett lined up in the gun, up back to his right. It's a four receiver set, two to either side. Takes the snap. And it is a handoff up the middle for about, and actually that's gonna be a lot more than two or three. It looked like he was down, but coming out of the pile was Sam Ratcliffe working it all the way up to the 47. A 16 yard run by the sophomore. Ball marked at the 47, 822 and counting. So Panthers line it back up. Barrett in the gun, a back to his right, two receivers either side. Takes the snap. And he is going to take this himself up the right side, runs into trouble and he will just take it out of bounds. 
Got maybe a yard on that with forward progress. No gain on the play. Second down. Seven fifty-four and ticking in this game, which will be third win of the season for the Holliston Panthers. Next Friday night, an interesting game for Holliston. They'll be taking on the Hopkinton Hillers, who are off to a nice start on their season as well. We may have that game for you on First Class Radio. As the Holliston Panthers will take on the Hopkinton Hillers, still to be determined as Barrett takes the snap from the gun, will roll to his left and be brought down at around the 48, about a yard of progress. Clock continues to run. And what a, what a great effort by this Holliston Panthers team. And Jared, you have to think, I mean, they've had two road games so far. And they were pretty dominant performances. A 34-20 win over Duxbury. And then a 42-6 win over Norwood. As Barrett set to take the snap from the gun. And it is a handoff, a sweep up the left side and breaking free for the first down and a little more is Sam Ratcliffe as he gets to around the 43 yard line. And that is a seven yard pickup for the sophomore. Well, Hollison's already been there. You know, like last year, they're a loss in the semifinal game. I mean, they were one win away from a bowl game uh, being finalists. And that was against the Concord Carlisle. We had that game for you here on First Class mm. Radio. And that was at the Cape. Mm -hmm. Nice bit of traveling for us, but a it was a fun game yeah, to watch. Yeah, yeah. Barrett in the gun, a back to his left. It is a four receiver set, two to either side. It's another handoff, and he lost the football. It was looked like Joe Belomo on the carry, and the Scarlet Hawks recovered the fumble. And correction on that carry was Rick Brown. Joe Blomo actually inactive tonight for the Holliston Panthers. So the Scarlet Hawks, they have the ball. 5.56 left to go. They will have it on their own 48 yard line. First and 10, Bill Hurd at their own 48 yard line. Zach Lanzetta is back out there with the offense, a back to either side. Receiver in the slot to the right, one spread out to the left, takes the snap and it is a handoff taken up the near sideline by Jack DeSantis. Gets past the 50, about a four yard pickup. Second down, 5.20 and counting. Lanzetta again with a back to either side. Pichuler spread out to the right. Double receivers in the slot to the left. Lanzetta will sweep up the right side and will get taken down at the 45. Three yard pickup, there's an injured Scarlet Hawk on the field. Another nice little gain there by Lanzetta, and unfortunately an injured player. Back to action after the injury. The Scarlet Hawks have the ball. It was a rush up to the 37. An eight yard pickup for the first down as the snap now, a handoff to Rodriguez and Rodriguez takes it to the far side, getting awfully close to the 30. That quarterback now for the Scarlet Hawks. It's Alex Mackick, the sophomore, as the hurry up offense here. And again, it's uh, Hearns taking the snap. And off to the right back, and that will move the chains again. So Scarlet Hawks, I think a little hurry up here, maybe trying something new. Hearns again with a back to either side. 
Handoff, flags all over the field as Rodriguez brought down. Rodriguez was brought down in the backfield. Three minutes and 38 seconds left to go. The Scarlet Hawks have the ball at the 24-yard line. Hearns was in at quarterback. Now it's Lanzetta. Lanzetta takes the snap, throws to the right side, and it's a touchdown. A 19-yard touchdown pass by Lanzetta. And now Sean Arquilano on the reception. So a couple pride touchdowns for the Scarlet Hawks. That will make the score 43 to 20. Now for the extra point. Snap and the kick is good. 43 to 21 each and every touchdown scored during high school football coverage is brought to you by Scarlet Hawks set to kick off right to left across your radio. A couple of pride touchdowns in the second half. It's been a good fourth quarter. They're outscoring uh, Hollis at 14 to nothing in the fourth yeah. quarter. It's really a tough game to absorb if you're a Milford fan. And you know Hollison, loaded with talent. They're back for another playoff run this season. You know that, but certainly did not expect domination like this, but the Milford uh, defense, they started to come into form a little bit towards the end, and this is a little squib kick, which sails back to around the 40 yard line, and it will not be returned for much. And the Holliston Panthers in just a couple plays here, they will be able to just waste the clock and knee it out. Holliston told by the official to break it up on the sideline and get the show on the road. The offense will come back out. Led by John Barrett, the sophomore, in the gun, a back to his right, a four receiver set. Two to either side, takes the snap. He will sweep up the right side before he's brought down at around the 40, a four yard pickup for the sophomore. I think if you've been listening to this game, you have a pretty good idea who the player of the game may be. Except we won't spoil the surprise for you. We'll wait till the post-game show. Yeah. 226 and ticking. Now Barrett lined up in the gun once again. Back to the left. Four receiver set two to either side. Takes the snap. Fakes the handoff, play action, taking it himself up the left side of the field. And he's brought down inside the 40, a couple yards there. Two minutes remaining in the game. Two minutes and counting. Austin Panthers certainly making a statement here tonight in their home opener. Showing Milford that, hey, you had a nice first game, but not against us here in, at our field. Barrett lined up in the gun, back to his right. Four receivers set once again with two to either side. Slot receiver on the left playing in tight. And Barrett taking this himself, sweeping up the right side. On the keeper, and he's brought down just short of the 45, about a two-yard pickup. And now just wasting the clock, and that'll bring up fourth down, minute and ticking, and if you're the Panthers, just kick this away and stop the Scarlet Hawks, and that'll pretty much do it. You can waste some of the clock here before you actually snap it. John Barrett back, set to kick it away. This game had a six o'clock start here tonight, an hour early or so. Halston can have their homecoming festivities. They have a dance event for the students going on later. So started the game an hour earlier. Change that happened midweek this week and the snap and a high punt which will sail back to the 20, it's dropped. 
at the 20 yard line and picked up by the Panthers. So just some icing on the cake. The Panthers could just knead out here. Nine seconds left to go. And that's what they'll do. They'll get in a victory formation, knead out and walk away with the 43 to 21 victory over the Milford Scarlet Hawks. And well, it's a great win for the Panthers. There's no denying that. And for the Milford Scarlet Hawks, they got some things going offensively. Defensively, they certainly need some work on the edges, stopping the run. I think that's a big note you can take home this game, and I'm sure they'll be working on that. But let's not underestimate the experience Milford has. A lot of experience on this team. They're going to get some wins this season. I guarantee that. They're a much better team than they were last year. But, of course, there is going to be rough patches when you meet up with a playoff caliber team like the Holliston Panthers. As they'll hand it off here for the last play of the game. They'll set, test that right edge. Still two seconds on the clock, and they're just going to let it run down. 43 to 21 is the final score. The Holliston Panthers beat the Milford Scarlet Hawks.